In this section, we want to look at Young and Friedman uh, University Physics uh, Section 7.2, which is on el elastic potential energy. Section 7.1 in this chapter was about gravitational potential energy. Elastic potential energy is the potential energy that is generated, so to speak, not, not really generated, but that is, that is uh, put into place by either um, stretching or compressing a spring and that's uh, elastic potential energy. Uh, to, to start the section, we probably want to go back to Hooke's Law in Chapter 6 of University Physics, Section 3. This is something Robert Hooke came up with several hundred years ago, 1600s, I believe, in which he found out that the amount of force uh, that, it was, that it took to stretch a spring a particular distance x um, was proportional. And, there, and the difference between the force and the distance is a constant, a spring constant, that is unique to every particular spring you're talking about. But basically the force it takes to stretch a spring is proportional uh, to the distance that you stretch it. Well, if you, if you think of, of doing that over time, you exert a force, uh, you pull the string from start to finish, um, the integral of, of this function uh, is going to be the the um, the total amount of force uh, that you exert over over that period of time of stretching, and so the work done is uh, the work done by uh, stretching a spring is the integral of the of Hooke's law, uh, where which ends up being uh, work done work elastic uh, done equals one half k x squared again where k is the constant of that spring and x is the distance that you've you've stretched it. And so work equals one one half kx squared is um, is the way you find out the total amount of work done um, by stretching a string. Well, work uh, in this sense, the amount of work that you took to stretch it or to compress it, uh, it you have so to speak creative created potential energy that would then be released if you let go of it. So the the potential energy uh, a stretched or compressed spring has from its its rest point. Basically, if you're holding the spring a certain distance, or you pressed you pressed it in a certain distance from its point of rest, um, the point of rest being where it's neither elongated or compressed, the amount of potential energy it has, either by being compressed or being elongated, is going to be one half kx squared. The amount of work you did to stretch it there, or the amount of work you you did to compress it uh, there. Similarly, if if you're if let's say let's say you start from a point that's already a little bit stretched and you stretch it further or you already have it a little bit pressed in and you press it in further uh, then the difference uh, basically the the amount of work that you've done from that one point to the next is the difference uh, between uh, the potential energy it had at the one point and the potential energy it has at the next point um, or the um, the where the work it, it took to get to the the first point and then the work it takes to get to the second point. The difference between those is going to be the amount of work it takes to stretch it from one point to, to another. And of course if, if x is zero to begin with then the equation collapses and it's just again one half kx squared all by itself. So um, what if you have gravitational and elastic uh, uh, gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy combined? Well then the work whatever it is that the total uh, the total amount of work done from one point to another by gravity plus the total amount done uh, to go from one point to another by uh, the the elastic potential uh, energy uh, and whatever other work is done is going to be the difference between the kinetic energy it has at one point and the kinetic energy it has at another. Remembering of course that although kinetic, kinetic energy is always positive work uh, can be negative um, and in particular the work done by other things is often uh, negative. Uh, so um, it's not just a getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The, this combination of work uh, can actually um, diminish uh, the amount. Um, and so here's another way to put it that, that may make uh, even more sense. That the amount of kinetic energy something has at one point plus the amount of potential energy something has at one point plus whatever other work is being done, friction, um, air resistance, whatever it is, is going to equal uh, the amount of kinetic energy it has at the second point 
plus the amount of potential energy uh, it has at the second point. Um, remembering that potential energy, you know, and, and so forth can can be negative, and work other is often um, is often negative. So this is uh, what we'll find in the next uh, section is the law of co conservation of energy, and so uh, elastic potential energy uh, can be, so to speak, created just like gravitational potential energy can be, so to speak, created, and of course it can be diminished for sure.